Back when you were in high school, you might have remembered the triangle theorems. And so these are tri these to let you know when two triangles are equivalent. So you might remember the side, side, side theorem, where if you have three sides of a triangle and they all have the same length, then you, the triangles that you get out of them are congruent to each other. Uh, there are a few more of these. So that was the side, side, side. Uh, you have side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Uh, there was the angle, side, angle angle, side, angle, and then there's the angle, angle, side. So angle, angle, side. Now you notice that I've sort of labeled the sides and angles, and basically the idea is that you want to sort of go in order. So this, it doesn't actually matter which way you go, um, but this is side, side, side. I'm gonna draw it in this direction. So side, 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 angle, side. Um, this one's going this way, angle, side, angle, and this one is angle, angle, side. So if you have information about triangles in these configurations, then you know there is exactly one triangle that can be created. There is one special case where this is not actually done, <clears throat> and that is the case where you have an angle, let's see, angle, Let's see, let's do it this way, side, side. Now I'm not actually gonna write up the acronym for that, you can just figure that one out for yourself, but the angle side side is allows for different possibilities. And so this is what we're gonna look at, and I'm actually gonna switch over to some computer graphics for this just because I want the pictures to be uh, clean and precise. Okay, so here we are in Desmos. We're actually in the geometry package of Desmos. Uh, it operates a little bit differently than the graphing side, but that's okay. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, we're only going to touch this now, so uh, don't worry too much about it. All right, so the idea here is that we have angle, side, side. Now, since we know this angle, we know that this side is going to be here, but we don't actually know how long it's going to be. And then we have a fixed angle, a fixed side, and then a fixed side. This green triangle represents all the different positions that that point can take while keeping that one radius, while, while maintaining the length of this side as it is. And so you can see with this specific configuration, there are exactly zero triangles we can make because this side is simply too short to reach this edge down here. And so angle side side in this case leads to zero possible triangles. As this gets longer and longer and longer, right at a certain point, we get one triangle. So of all the places that this uh, side can take, right now there's just this one right here and it creates a right triangle. So angle side side results in just one triangle in this configuration. If we go a little bit further out, you can actually see that there are two different triangles that can be made here. We have the triangle up on this side or the triangle over on this side. And so this is why we call it the ambiguous case because now we have two possible triangles that can result from the same given information, this angle, this side and this side are all given pieces of information, but we have two different triangles that we can get. We have this one over here, and then we have this one over here. And so this unknown length could take two possible values. And that's why we call it the ambiguous case. Now, as it turns out, if we just keep making this side longer and longer and longer, eventually we get back down to just one triangle again. Come back here. We get back down to one triangle again because the second side over here ends up ending up on the wrong side of the angle, and so it no longer works. And so when we solve this algebraically, uh, we're gonna have to take a look at these different cases. So when you have the angle side side condition, you're gonna have to look at that, and you're also gonna have to ask yourself the question, how many triangles do I get out of this? And we'll see algebraically exactly where this comes up. It's actually, uh, if, we, if we do it the right way, it makes itself absolutely apparent where this possibility enters. You just have to remember to do it. Before we go on and look at an example of this, I do want to show you what this picture looks like when the angle is an obtuse angle. Remember, an obtuse angle is an angle larger than 90 degrees. So in this case, if our, third, if our side here is too short, it remains the case that there are no triangles. But as you come down here, you can see that if you get beyond a certain size, then there will be one triangle and one triangle only. And so in the case where you have an obtuse angle, uh, there will never be a, uh, a possible second case because the second potential place of intersection is going to be over here somewhere, but that's on the wrong side of that point. 
Uh, and again, the algebra will tell us these things if we do the algebra correctly. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the algebra of the ambiguous case. The real point where this comes up is solving the equation that looks something like this. Sine of some angle is equal to a number. Now, we know some things about this. First of all, we know that if that number is bigger than 1, then there are no solutions. And this is because in the unit circle, we can't solve this value. Right? So remember, the sine value is the y value. If that y value is bigger than 1, if it's up here, then there are no points on the circle that correspond to it. If c is between 0 and 1, we're in this situation. And there are two solutions. And that corresponds to a solution in the first quadrant and a solution in the second quadrant. And this is where we get those two angles from. We get one angle from over here, but then we also get this angle over here. And so uh, we have to take it. We have to take that into account every time we try to solve this sort of situation. Um, and I sort of skip the the case in the middle. If c equals one, then there is one solution. And that corresponds to our line being right at the tangent, or that line being tangent to the unit circle right there. And so this is the algebra that we're going to be looking at, is that when we're going to solve these equations, if we have this have a case where we're solving sine of theta equals a number, and that number is between 0 and 1, then we have to consider the possibility of there being angles in the second quadrant. Now, depending on the exact setup of the problem and how we've done it, that second angle may or may not actually lead to a triangle. And we'll see situations where that happens in uh, when we talk about the law of cosines and sort of when we combine those two ideas together. Um, but you should always sketch out the triangle and just make sure that everything makes sense in your diagram and not just blindly plug stuff into formulas and go forward.